What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are live here on the DST show for more news involving the NBA offseason. Of course, free agency pretty much has started. So certain teams are already trying to make them bread with the amount of players that they have on superstar level. Well-deserved money. Zion Williamson just made five years, $192 million, even though he barely even played triple digits of games. While his what he's about to reach his third season of his NBA career, while having even playing a smidgen of basketball since uh, you know the NBA bubble over his leg injury, gaining weight now it seems to be in full he seems to be in full health, and that includes over thirty percent of cap. The same person that was in the same draft class been playing at a high level for the same amount of time that Zion Williamson has been in the league, and that's John Morant. Point guard for the for the Grizzlies. That is, I feel well earned money, and a lot more money than Zion Williamson as sh he should. That's five years, one hundred ninety two point nine million dollars for a designated rookie st contract extension. So just coming out of that three year deal, they get either a, a gross minimum of the same way they had for Jason Tatum and Brandon Ingram in the abundance of that draft class. Carl Anthony Towns just agreed over a four-year extension with the Minnesota Timberwolves to go over four years, $222 million. Yeah, I'm making you guys poor just reading it. <laughs> and that's coming over to $270 million. That was already paid over Nikola Jokic after he signed a four-year deal before. They paid Aaron Gordon. Uh, they paid $90 million for Jamal Murray that didn't even play most of the season. And still, the Nuggets made it to the playoffs, but were unsuccessful. Uh, yeah, just uh, crazy. And the Brooklyn Nets traded away Royce O'Neal. Uh, traded for Royce O'Neal for the 2023 first-round pick. And that's lesser, and that goes lesser for Houston or Philly. It's not really protected, but... Uh, Royce O'Neal has been uh, on and off again consistent starting big for the Utah Jazz for a majority of, of the years with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. And there's still talks over for Rudy Gobert being traded over to somebody. Oh, and Jalen Bronson, he's a Nick. That's $104 million for, uh, for, nine, for four years. So that's paying $27 million to possibly paying around like $22 million each year for the four years that he's stuck in New York. And that's dependent if he even pans out. I still disagree with the signing, and I think that's the most worst contract you can give somebody that gives some semblance of a offense that can, you know, protrude an offense for less amount of money. Like, there's not any better point guards that do their job well, like, you could have signed over Ricky Rubio that can actually that actually put up some decent numbers or Colin Sexton and see what you can do with that. But I understand. Uh he's a bit more experienced. I think this is fourth NBA season. He's been a a good enough floor general for the for the Dallas Mavericks. And he did and he did well to make sure that they always kept over good leads and they and he helped them uh go to the conference finals, so Paying him at least $70 million, would it be a better off his price range? I felt like this was a massive overpayment for Jalen Brunson. But anything to get the names going. Also, Ricky Rubio agreed with a contract with Cleveland. So I guess he returns there after a stint, after getting trading away to the Pacers. For uh, trading away Karis LeVert. And Gary Payton. Junior, NBA champ, generational star, just got paid a well-earned three year, three years, twenty nine million for the Portland Trailblazers. I think he's been on that team before, but he's earned it. He's been he deserves that bread after being well done on defense, pushing in great points, getting great advice from an NBA champion and veteran like Andre Iguodala. So this guy obviously obviously improves his basketball IQ. Will hustle for you on the court. I hope uh, Chauncey Billups does what he can with him, but I feel, but I have good faith in Gary Payton Jr. Mike Muscala agreed over a one-year, two uh, point sixty-four million-dollar deal with the Oklahoma City Thunder, 
and from and Mortiz Wagner, the first round pick from like what 2020 season, and he comes around getting paid a guaranteed 1.88 million dollars for a salary around 2022 to 2023. Like, oof. And the major is still the major topic is. Over opting in and making sure that Kyrie doesn't, you know, ride his coattails so he has a reason to leave. Kevin Durant has asked for his trade over the Brooklyn Nets. So the possibilities are endless. I mean, the possibilities is bunched up to at least a handful of teams that is willing to pay his salary. But that's still a major thing. So he might go over to the Philadelphia 76ers. I feel like they might get rid of KD and just let him deal with Embiid and get another swing player. Uh, I don't. I don't feel like uh, Harden is a reliable person. He can. He can protrude and you know space the floor out. Good. He great ISO player, but it's possibly going to be the same noise that he had over in Brooklyn. Just less Kyrie controversy over the COVID stuff. And uh, Miami, just a better culture. We already made it to the conference finals two of our last three seasons in the postseason, and. Uh, we're still keeping nearly the exact same unit. If you guys haven't been seeing most of our free agents, uh, our resigns, except PJ Tucker going to the Philadelphia 76ers. So that's that's a bit big over its own right. I thought PJ Tucker was just there to be, you know, the anchor, push over what he can do on three and D, and cause us foul trouble. Other than that, uh, yeah, Duncan Robinson. I hope Tyler Hero gets some more, uh presumptuous role dunk uh because i feel like he was a bit undervalued as just the six man we can push him over to the two guard i i know that we already re-signed victor Oladipo, so we can have him as a as an in-depth playmaker i don't know if anybody still wants him thinks he hasn't done stuff to push him to a starting role since his time in indiana and that sucks because i like victor Oladipo when he was in indiana i thought he really had a chance with shabonis turner and and himself but I'm um, grateful what he can do for the team, and he's shown that he can still hoop in a high level. And well, Spolstra, Butler still trying to give it a shot and making it over to the conference finals, pushing a game seven against the inexperienced Celtics. Man, I just wish stuff worked a bit differently. But the possibilities are still endless. We could end up with Donovan Mitchell. But the mass of re-signings over the desperation of most of these franchises are maddening. And knowing that Kevin Durant has a possibility of still, like, being part of certain teams. Dude, that's going to be a, probably a crazy NBA offseason, even though most of the designated free agents are re literally to just fill up in-depth spots. You're not really seeing a, m a lot of game changers in uh, what I just established over the last stream. Like, most of these guys are there to pursue on, in uh, you know, Defense and three-point shooting. You're not seeing much over to the side of you get one player, they're going to amount to a playoff push like what we had around the 2018-2019 uh, NBA offseason like we did with Al Horford, Durant, Westbrook, LeBron. Like a lot of game-changing signings, uh, you know, that made, that was on the super, the super, the super team fad. So, I don't know. Nothing's for sure here in the NBA season. That's what I'm going to say. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me how you feel about the NBA offseason. Uh, who you think is going to get traded, signed, or waved off, bought out, anything. And I'll discuss it probably on a recent live if we get more than like a lot of transactions that happen over the date. That's it from the DSC Show. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.